You can see that now we've reached the final point, uh, which is doing the actual programming. So let's hit add component and uh, let's create a wave UI script. Let's hit create an add. And we could implement this directly into the wave spawner, but I like the idea of uh, keeping these separate. So let's double click that to open it up in uh, Visual Studio. And uh, I'm simply going to removing the uh, using system.collections namespace and in instead be using uh, unity engine.ui. And uh, the first thing that we want to be creating here is a uh, serialized field, because this is going to be private. And uh, we want a reference to the wave spawner, because we, uh, the wave spawner keeps track of its current state, uh, the countdown timer and all that, and we want to have access to those. So we need a reference to the wave spawner, and we're just going to name this uh, spawner. And we also need some kind of serialized field. We also need to uh, have a reference to our animator. So this is going to be the of type animator. And uh, let's just call this wave animator. And uh, in the start method, we can check if uh, these are actually referenced. Actually, we need some more. So let's just do a serialized field. We need a text object that stores our uh, wave countdown text and a serialized field that stores or a text object that stores our wave count text or a wave number text. So cool, that's all of the references that we're going to be needing, I think. And now in the start method, we can simply uh, add some checks to make sure that uh, these are actually uh, filled in. So if spawner is equal to null, then we want to throw an error saying that uh, no spawner referenced. And then we can simply disable the component. And we want to do this for all of the variables. So let's just copy that if statement a bunch of times. And first for the wave animator, wave animator, wave animator, then for the uh, wave countdown text, and finally the wave count text. Cool. And uh, then in the update method, uh, we want to have some kind of logic that will um, that will kind of do things depending on what state the wave spawner is in. And therefore we need uh, to have access to the state of the wave spawner. But with, if we go ahead and look at the wave spawner as is, you can see that the spawn state is currently private. We have this enum that uh, can go uh, between spawning, waiting and counting. Uh, and uh, that's stored in, in state, but it's private. So instead of just making this public and available, uh, fully available to the script, I want to create a getter for this because I don't want us to be able to change the spawn state. That's something that uh, the wave spawner should have full authority over, uh, but I want us to actually access the spawn state. So in order to do this, uh, I simply want to keep that private and then create a public spawn state. And uh, we'll just name this state with a capital S and uh, then open up some curly brackets and create a getter that will return the state. And that's all we need to do. Also, I want to maybe move this pop. No, let's just keep that in here. That's fine. Never mind. Good. So uh, now that we have that, I want to do the same with the wave countdown because that's also something that we want access to later uh, when we change, we are changing the uh, text. So I want to create a public float wave countdown with a capital W. And uh, this is going to have a getter that returns wave countdown. And finally, for the uh, next wave, uh, Let's just wait with that, I think, uh, because I don't remember the index of this. Um, 
Okay, let's just create the getter now and then we'll change it. So for now, we'll simply say that public float or public integer uh, next wave is going to get next or return next wave. We might need to do some kind of subtraction here or addition. I don't know. So we'll find out. So for now, we can then go into uh, wave UI and we can create a switch statement that will do different stuff depending on the state. So switch depending on uh, the spawn state. So that means that we can get the uh, spawner dot state. And uh, the different cases that we want to have is a case, uh, case one where uh, spawner.state is equal to wave spawner dot spawn state dot counting. So we are currently counting, in which case we will do the following. So then we will uh, call some kind of method that will say that we are counting. So let's make that method and it's going to be a void and then it's going to be called update countdown UI. And in here for now, we're simply going to be saying debug.log counting. And uh, we can then call this method in here and break because we don't want to fall through to the other layers. Then case wave spawner dot spawn state dot spawning. And in here, we want to update the um, incoming UI and break. Or maybe we should call this the spawning UI. Yeah, we should probably do that. And maybe we should, yeah, let's rename this to update counting UI. I think that's better. Cool. And let's create this method now. So let's just duplicate this, rename it to update spawning UI, and this should say spawning. So we're calling different methods depending on the state. And uh, that's all we are going to do for now. Let's just see if that is indeed working. So let's go into Unity. We have no errors, but we should have a bunch of slots. And let's just fill these in. So the animator is going to go there. The GM object is going to go there because that has the wave spawner. The wave countdown text is going to go there and the wave count text is going to go there. Cool. So now when we hit play, we should see down here that it says counting, 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 counting. And when we're done, it should say spawning, spawning, spawning. And it does. So that's perfect. And uh, now we need to kind of trigger uh, the animation. So inside our update counting UI, we are going to check if uh, this, we are, basically we are only going to trigger uh, the counting uh, animation once. And therefore we need to check if we've just switched to the state. So we'll do that, that by storing the previous state and comparing it to the current state. So let's create a private variable. And this is going to be a uh, wave spawner dot spawn state. And uh, we are just going to call this previous state. And we don't want to default it to anything. And then in the update method, after we do our switch statement, we want to set previous state equal to uh, uh, spawner dot state. And then in here, we can simply say that if previous state state is not equal to spawner dot uh, or if if the previous state is not equal to spawn state dot counting so wave spawner dot spawn state dot counting so meaning that we've just switched to this state well uh, then we want to debug dot log that we are counting and uh, we want to do the same down here, but now with the spawning state. And we want to debug.log spawning instead. 
Cool. So if we were to save that and uh, state is not a method, there we go. We can now hit play and we should see that uh, the state only shows once. So that's only called once and now we're spawning. So that's only called once. And we can of course go ahead and uh, kill off these opponents. And you can see that it goes back to counting there. So that's super awesome. Uh, and what we can do with this is we can trigger the animation correctly. So now we can go in here and we can say that we want our wave spawner or our wave animator uh, to trigger the animation by setting the bull uh, with the name and I remember, yeah, wave countdown to true because we're currently counting down and uh, we want to set wave animator dot set bull. We want to set the uh, wave incoming to false because we can have multiple states at once. So we'll just disable that and enable this. And uh, we want to do the same thing uh, down here, but reversed. We'll just duplicate those, change uh, the order, change that to true, and this to false. Perfect. So I think that will trigger the animation correctly. And uh, let's check if it will. We're counting down. And it goes and says what wave is currently coming. And we can kill off the opponents here. Three, two, one. And uh, the system will keep going even though we are respawning. And you can see that that's working. So now all we need to do is simply update the text. So in here, we'll simply uh, say, depending, no matter if we've uh, just gone to the state or we've um, uh, if this is not the first time, uh, well, we're still going to be updating the text. So we want to say that uh, wave countdown text dot text equals, and then we want to get the uh, spawner dot and uh, the it is wave countdown. Yep. And uh, we can't just set it equal to this. First of all, this is a float, so it's going to have decimal points, which is not something we want to display. And also, uh, we need to convert it into a string. So first off, we can simply truncate this uh, by converting it into an integer, which means that we will just get rid of any decimals. It's not going to round it up. It's just going to delete the decimals. And then we can convert it into a string by uh, simply enclosing these in some parentheses and hitting dot to string and calling this as a method. So that will uh, make it into a string. And down here, and we don't want to, uh, and we only want to do this once, so we can do it in here. We want to uh, set the wave count text dot text equal to uh, spawner dot wave next wave. Let's close that off. And uh, why is this? Okay, we need to, of course, convert this into a string also. Dot to string. Let's save that. And uh, now we might see uh, again that the uh, wave that we are spawning is off, but you can see that the countdown is fine. And then it says wave zero incoming. And we probably want to increment that by uh, one. That makes most sense to users, I think. So now it says wave one incoming, and that's perfect. So we simply need to increase that by one. And uh, we can do that in the return statement or in here. But I, send, I think that since this is a get only, uh, we'll, have, we'll increment it uh, by one in here. That makes sense. So we'll return uh, next wave plus one. And uh, if we now hit play, and let's do this in full screen because I'm fairly certain that this is going to be working. And also let's uh, simply comment out the debug.log statement there and there. And uh, let's go into Unity, maximize on play and hit play. And uh, there we go, it's counting down. It's saying that wave one is incoming and there the enemies are. And we can go ahead and just shoot them. It's gonna start counting down again and waving coming. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted 
to do. And uh, one thing that you will notice here is that the countdown and uh, the text up here are not uh, following each other. And the reason why is we simply need to go under the UI overlay, uh, wave UI here, and find the wave countdown text and set the anchor point to the top here. So that will make sure that these will uh, follow each other. Uh, I'm fairly certain at least. So let's just check that. That and that. That needs to be right there. And I think that is all. And you can see that now they're following. Cool. So that was basically all we had to do. Let's disable that. Disable that. And let's just enjoy this uh, final time, shall we? So clear the console. Open up the game in full screen. Hit play. And now you can see that they're in the same place. Perfect. So that was basically all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think our uh, game is finally starting to come together here and uh, be playable. And now you can go ahead and play around with uh, tweaking stats on the different enemies, making some bigger and some smaller enemies uh, so that they get harder and harder, um, changing their uh, damage amount and uh, their speed. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do uh, with this. Of course, also the health amount. So I will definitely, I would definitely recommend that you play around with these uh, mechanics, see what you can get out of them, maybe create multiple enemies. And uh, yeah, that's basically all. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.